reading from our gospel text. God be merciful to me, a sinner. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a problem. We have a problem in our text. We have a problem in our congregation. The problem in our text and in our congregation is this. I'm going to ask you something, and I want to see if you would answer me honestly. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioner, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. Who wouldn't want him to be a member of our church? Who would not want this man as a member of our church? Uh, let's be honest. Because, I mean, hey, he's, he's, saying, he's talking about all of the things that God has blessed him with. He's giving thanks to God that he is not an extortioner, unjust, adulterer. Who would not want a man who fasts twice a week and gives tithes from everything that he has. Can you imagine the coffers overflowing with pharisaical gold? Who would not want this man as a member of our congregation? I mean, sure, he's a little puffed up, and, 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 we're, and, we're, supposed to, and we're supposed to see. look at this text and go, Pharisee, bad, tax collector, good. That's it. Let's go home. It's almost time for lunch. That's not how, we're, that's not how this text works. The Pharisee stands up by himself, which in the language means he arrived. He stood up. This is not abnormal for him to stand up and to make his plea. Who would not want someone to stand up and tell of the great things that God has given unto him? Now we have a little problem with the I thank you that I'm not like other men part, right? I mean, we, get, we don't like that. And, and we understand. Now, it seems that the Pharisee would be a good candidate for membership at Augustana Lutheran Church. Now, tax collector, he skims off the top. He takes, he, he, he is given a percentage to go and collect. He goes and he collects the money, but he charges an extra 10%. And then he pockets that 10% and then he gives the tax to his employer. How many of you would like to have a tax collector as a member of Augustana Lutheran Church? All of a sudden we start talking about money, we're like, wait, no, no, we don't no skimming off the top. We'll take the arrogant Pharisee who pays the bills over the tax collector who skims off the top. To me, that seems fair. If it wasn't for this, the Pharisee does stand up and say, I thank you that I'm not like other men, which we can understand and that God has blessed him. But then he starts pointing out the tax collector. Then he says, by the way, he, he, he has another jab in there as well. He says, extortioners and tax collectors. But, but that's the same thing. Thank you for not making me like this man, 
That man in the back. I'm not pointing at you guys. That man in the back. And there's no but that, that man in the back there. Thank you for not making me like him. But the tax collector is right to repent. He is absolutely 110% right to repent because he has been skimming off the top. That's why tax collectors were so hated. It wasn't because they just collected taxes. It's because they double dipped. Yet, we see the tax collector standing far off and he is so repentant that he will not even lift up his eyes to, the, to, to heaven. Even if he has nothing to give, nothing to give, but that he has returned his, the money that he has stolen and has repented, turns his eyes down, that he can't even look up at God he can't even, he can't even uh, stand to, 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 to look up and, and, and see the, 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 uh, the Pharisee or even those in the temple. He can't even stand to look and see where his forgiveness comes from. He beats his breast and he says, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Now there's a problem with the translation here. In the, in the Greek text... It is not mercy. The word is not mercy. It's propitiation. It's mediation. He's praying to Christ. He's praying that God would see him through the eyes of his son. God, atone for me. Send the blood of your Son. God, be my propitiation for sin. God, be my mediator. I can't do it myself. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Who would we want as a member of this church. Then again, we have these words. Well, let me start from here. When I think of the Pharisee, I think of pastors. I think of pastors who think more of themselves than they ought. I am guilty of this. There is no doubt. I've been thinking a lot, and my conscience has been plagued. This text will do that. And what I've understood is which way, if a pastor is going to remain a pastor, how should he lead? Should he lead from the front or should he lead from the rear? When I think of myself more than I ought, I'm, reading, I'm leading from the front. And I'm unaware of the dangers that's happening to the flock. Pastor must lead from the rear and make sure that there is no danger. And when danger comes, that pastor beats the danger away. He beats the devil straight to hell. He beats the sin away. And sometimes that does mean that he beats himself and his flock. But remember this, if the pastor leads from the back, Christ leads from the front. And as we follow him, all those 
who humble themselves will be exalted. So, let me ask you this question. Would you have Saul as a member of our congregation? I am least of the, of the apostles, he said. I am unworthy of being called an apostle. I should not be called an apostle. I not only persecuted the church, which is another buzzword where we go, persecution, okay, eh, not so bad. No, he murdered them. He killed the church. He wasn't spreading gossip and rumors. He was cutting people's heads off. And if he himself didn't do it, it was by his word and his point that Christians die. Who's willing to give him a ride to church? But then he says, I am least of the apostles. Unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. But it is by the grace of God, by the grace of God alone, I am what I am. Which, by the way, translates into, I'm God. I am who God says I am. But God, by His grace, I am what I am. And His grace toward me is not in vain. On the contrary, and I promise you this, as your pastor, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. By the grace of God, I will work harder. By the grace of God, I will do right by you. By the grace of God, I will sin against. But by the grace, I will sin against you. By the grace of God, you will hopefully forgive me. But I would commune Paul any day of the week. How many of you would say, Pastor, you would commune a murderer in a second if he's repentant? You can't out -sin God. You cannot out -sin God's forgiveness if you repent. Because here's the difference between Cain and you. The blood that cries out from the ground is not Abel's. It's Jesus's. Jesus' blood cries out from the ground for you. Propitiating. Mitigating. He is our mediator. He is the one who says, you have the forgiveness of sins. You have, you have sinned greatly. And so here we see two different types of, of law. A, a law that the Pharisees believed and a law that governs our hearts. The Pharisee on the one hand says, listen, God has blessed me and I have been able to keep the law. Look at all the, look at all the law keeping I've done. And then there's the law that we have where you must beat your breast and you must say, I am a sinner. And if you refuse to, to, to repent, Christ refuses forgiveness. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. That scares the hell right out of me. I repent. I repent to you, my brothers and sisters, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. I have sinned. I ask for your forgiveness. But I know that by the grace of God, 
I am what I am. And what I am is the pastor of Augustana Lutheran Church. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.